Okay, so when we have an equilibrium reaction happening, or a reaction is seeking equilibrium, sometimes they take readings as it's getting to equilibrium and make a graph out of it. So you can see what happened to concentrations as the reaction went on. And that's what's happening here. We've got a reaction that involves nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia. And these are the concentrations of the various substances as the reaction progressed. Let's make this a little easier to read. The nitrogen is supposed to be the open dots. I'm going to do that with it. And the hydrogen is supposed to be the black dots here. So this is red is H2 and blue is nitrogen and red and blue makes purple so I'll use purple for the ammonia going like that. That's NH3. Okay, so what do they want with this? Write the balanced reaction. Okay, I'm going to put, I'm going to do an incorrect reaction just to show you a mistake that might happen when you do this. We have ammonia and nitrogen and hydrogen, so obviously the reaction must be you take ammonia and if you put some heat to it, you can get it to break down into nitrogen and hydrogen. Uh, two nitrogens, so I need a two here. Six hydrogens, so I need a three there. Okay. If I say that's the reaction, how could you tell that that's wrong? If you look at these re if you look at these chemicals, what we have here is nitrogen and hydrogen are both dropping. They're being used up, and the amount of ammonia is rising, meaning that's what we should be showing as a product. So by seeing that these two drop, that means they should be on the reactant side. Ammonia, which is rising, should be on the product side, therefore this is backwards, and you shouldn't write this. And you're probably thinking, well, no kidding, I I've already written the Haber process and I've been waiting for you to get fixed up so this is maybe not a mistake you would have made but with a less obvious reaction we rely on the drops and the rises to tell us who's our reactant and who's our product. NH3. Okay so there's our real reaction. Nitrogen is used up, there it is dropping. Hydrogen is used up, there it is dropping. Ammonia is produced, here it is rising. So there's our balanced chemical reaction. I'll put that down there. Determine what time equilibrium was reached. At first, the system is not in equilibrium, and so we produce ammonia, and as we do, these numbers start to rise. As we get closer to equilibrium, they start to change less and less. This means that the forward reaction, at first we have forward reaction and almost no reverse reaction. As this progresses, the forward reaction starts to slow down. It starts getting a little harder to find nitrogens and hydrogens, and the reverse reaction starts to pick up because there's more and more ammonia available to break down again. And so it starts to bog, and eventually this line becomes flat. And flat means you've gotten to dynamic equilibrium. When this is flat, it means the forward and reverse reactions are happening equally fast, and that means from a distance you it seems like nothing is happening. So when did that happen? It looks to me like about here is where it flattens out, and that is about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, give or take. Indicate whether reactants or products are favored. Well, the way we find that is with a K, so let's stick with Ks because they keep on working. The K for this reaction would be ammonia squared. It's our one and only product over... And for reactants, we have nitrogen and hydrogen cubed. Now, we can get numbers off of this graph if we're careful enough. At equilibrium, the amount of ammonia, if we take this flat line and extend it back, eh, that's pretty good. What is that, 4.3, 4.4? I'll go 4.3. 
The ammonia concentration is 4.3. Must remember to square it. Nitrogen concentration. That's the blue line. And something like that. 8.3. for nitrogen moles per liter and for hydrogen red line if we follow try to follow all those dots that's almost exactly 6 isn't it let's call it 6 to the third so 4.3 squared divided by 8.3 and also divided by 6 cubed which is 216 and I get that the K is 0 0.0103. So what does that mean about products or reactants favored? Well, it's smaller than 1, which means it favors the reactants. When this thing settles down at equilibrium, you have this reaction prefers nitrogen and hydrogen. It doesn't produce a lot of ammonia and calculate the equilibrium constant. Well, that's odd. It, it's strange that they asked him in that order because it's hard to answer C unless you've got the equilibrium constant already. So we found it's 0 0.0103. Um, these numbers here, I mean, I'm barely getting one significant digit. It's, there's not even a scale here for me to get a second decimal place for these concentrations I was using, so I think I would just report the K as 0 0.01 or 1 times 10 to the negative 2. I can't read this graph well enough to justify any more digits than that. I'm not even sure about the 0.3s that I was getting, so that means I can't even really say this is a two significant digit number because I'm so uncertain about the 3. So it's probably safer to do this and just give an answer to one sig dig.